Welcome back to Dealing with the Devils. It's been a long time, 10 days since the Blue Devils last played, which was their first loss of the season. They look to get back on track against Evansville tonight. JD, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the fact that these guys are happier when they were taking exams than facing Coach K after that loss in BC. All right, so Dealing with the Devil fans, we have a little bit of a new format for this episode here. We're going to be breaking it down every four minutes coming back, so it's going to be semi-live, although we'll be uh, showing it to you guys after the game. So for my preview, I think Marvin Bagley is going to have a big performance here tonight um, and really come out and, and show why he deserves to be the top player in the nation. I think we're going to look for Grayson. He's back home to put on a show tonight. It's going to be a combination of three-pointers and that devastating drive to the basket where either he looks to finish or dish. All right, we'll be back in the 16 minute mark. Here we are at the 1553 mark, and probably the most remarkable thing at the moment is Javin Delorier sitting on the bench with a hooded sweatshirt, and we he's got don't a polo. Know. It's a polo. Whatever it is, he's on the bench, and you know the one thing about Duke, they're more guarded than Russia. Uh, well, uh, there's so much wrong with what you just said. First of all, couldn't get his clothing right. Like, what? Okay, but I do agree. We won't know what the injury is until two weeks from now when he comes back in the game and they'll tell us what happened. I think he sprained his hand taking one of his exams. Uh, well, okay, let's talk about the game so far. We're a couple minutes in. Wendell Carter's already on the bench because of fouls. I, I just committed one to my what I could see there. Alex Okano had a good rebound. Uh, it was that beautiful three-pointer from Mo Bags. He just gracefully got the three-point line released in the motion. Beautiful shot. Yeah, that trail three-pointer. He got, he had that rhythm dribble to pull it up there, and he looked really nice. Grace Allen had a nice acrobatic finish. And the Blue Devils look pretty nice with a nice uh, press uh, defense early on in this game. It's fun to watch it, and they should apply it all the time. I want to go back to years ago, Arkansas's 40 minutes of hell, where they just pressed for 40 minutes. The bench is deep enough. Coach K should go for it. The only other thing I can think of from the uh, first four-minute segment, and remember, this is one of the key things about watching college basketball. The half is divided into five four-minute segments, so we're going to see you at the 12-minute mark. And we're back. It's 23-13 Blue Devils. They went on a bit of a run here. 11.56 mark, JD. What have you noticed? I think one of the most exciting things about this team is when the two bigs decide to pair up with each other. They go pass to pass, either on the out, it, in, sometimes in the interior, and sometimes even on the exterior where they're passing around the zone. Yeah, and I know I got on Wendell Carter for his foul trouble early on, and it was just one foul, but you know, his shooting, he hit a three-pointer, he hit a turnaround jump shot, he's got great touch around the rim, and he always gets one man rebound where he rebounds it with just one hand a game. I think the thing you should be pointing at is my new scarf. Nobody can see your scarf, JD. Oh, we're not on TV. That's right. My new Duke scarf. It's actually awesome. All right. One thing that's important to point out is that Evansville is missing four players that do account for 46% or 46 points per game. Um, I don't know how much that would have mattered, but just important to note. See you guys at the eight-minute mark. We're back at the eight-minute mark. Duke's taken a 30-15 to 15 point lead. There's been a lot of really good individual play. I'm not going to say they're moving the best as a unit but very good individual play. Right, and speaking of that, I thought Marquise Bolden, while we've given him flack at times for his play, has played really well tonight against Evansville in limited minutes off the bench. He's been very active. He's got a steal and a block already in limited minutes. And speaking of off the bench, this is probably the earliest arrival we've ever seen of Justin Robinson on the court. Absolutely, and the hamstring injury to Jam Deloria has necessitated along with the full court press, a deeper bench by Coach K, albeit it is Evansville. We'll be back for the next segment. At the four minute mark, we've got Duke up 45 16, and the Purple Aces are more looking like the Purple Deuces. Okay, okay, not the worst, JD. I'll give you something for that one. Um, the, the Blue Devils have certainly opened this one up to put it uh, nicely. And, you know, it's still the first half here, and, and Coach K is going to look for them to maintain that defensive intensity 
that has led to just 16 Evansville points. Granted, they are missing four important players. But, you know, I, I want to mention uh, Jordan Goldwire has had a very good game so far. Four assists early on leading the team. He made a nice three-pointer from the corner, which is big for him as he's been struggling from beyond the three-point arc. In this, the fourth segment of the first half, we featured uh, nice three-pointers from uh, Grayson. Saved the ball from going out of bounds. Buried to three. And Gary Trent with a nice three. All right, we'll see you at the halftime as we continue breaking down this game against the Evansville Purple Deuces. And we're at halftime. 58-18 Blue Devils in what has turned into a rout of the Purple Aces here. Led by Wendell Carter, Marvin Bagley, and Grayson Allen, JD. And well, clearly we've had an opportunity to see a number of the bench players get some time, which is good. And I think that ultimately with a 40-point lead at half, Coach K is going to have to empty the bench. Yep, yep. And some quick numbers to note. 18 assists led by Jordan Goldwire with five, Duvall with four, and Bagley with three. Tremendous sharing of the basketball in the first half here, as well as eight steals. They've been putting on that pressure on Evansville, who, you know, as we've mentioned, they're missing a number of players and are on their third string point guard. I think one other thing to point out here at half, and maybe we should have started before the game with this, but that... Uh, during the 10 days that we've been off and the polls have come out, Duke is now ranked four, Jack. Right, behind Villanova, Michigan State, and Arizona State. And now the Blue Devils, you know, they... they Wait, who's Arizona State coached by? Bobby Hurley, legendary Duke point guard. J.D., do you remember watching him play? I think I do. Let's slap the floor for the fans. All right, well, we'll continue here because nobody, nobody else had to see that, thankfully for them. And uh, we'll see you guys in the second half of what remains of this Duke game. Uh, but more, more likely, we'll be focusing on moving on here to 10 days from now when the Blue Devils play Florida State in their first conference home game. JD, welcome to the Wendell Carter Jr. Show. 25 points and counting in a career-high performance here against the Evansville Purple Aces. With four for seven from three-point range, when are they going to go out and guard them? It's as if the bank is left wide open. The vault is there. There's no guards. Wendell Carter's hit more three-pointers tonight than he has all season. The Blue Devils are up by 50. See you at the 12-minute mark. We're back at 1147. Duke extending the lead to 82-27. It is time for the bench to be unloaded. Yeah, uh, this is the part where the announcers start talking about other things. So I'd like to mention Trey Young, the guard from Oklahoma. He's been phenomenal early on this season. 28 points, 10 assists. He just put 20 assists in the game. Tremendous from him. I think you have to help me out. Who does he play for? Oklahoma. Well, thank you. Okay, now back to the Duke game where, in fact, uh, Marquise Bolden, even though he's got a easy team to play against isn't the smoothest of the Duke big men. Right, and you know, I want to mention the, the other freshman guards. We always talk about Gary Trent and Trayvon Duval, but in this game, Goldwire and O'Connell have really gotten minutes and been able to produce. Especially, this has been a great game for Goldwire, building up his confidence. As mentioned at the half, five assists. Now he's up to five points. He's played really well, especially with two assists. See you at the eight-minute mark. 91-35 Blue Devils, and we've got plays from Jack White, Antonio Brankovic, it's Magnus here in Cameron. The Blue Devils have, have, well, JD, what's going on here? It really is a Christmas festival with Jack White, an incredibly timed, beautiful steal, races the length of the court, goes up, slam dunk, the entire Cameron crazies go nuts. We are only three Blue Devils away from seeing everybody. It is just a cornucopia of Blue Devils. A cornucopia. You have to spell that one for our fans. I can't even say it. See you guys in four minutes. And the Blue Devils win. 104-40. A nail-biter, JD. It was close right to the end. There's no question about it. The bench players played hard. 
All I want to say is, where was Pop tonight? Where was the Admiral? J-Rob, a pair of three-pointers. I never saw the Admiral do that. Right. And, and, and in, you know, more important Blue Devil news, although I don't want to take anything away from J-Rob. He was fantastic and, in fact, got early minutes tonight because of the, of the absence of Javin Delorier in this one. But, you know, this was all about Wendell Carter Jr. Um, while the game was still a contest. 27 points, and he did it with four three-pointers. Again, more than he had the whole season coming into this one. And the game was a contest when? Well, that would be, uh, I guess, eight minutes into the first half? I, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, other than that, the Blue Devils finished with 32 assists on that the night. Is, that's an impressive number, even in a blowout. It shows a lot of effort to uh, find the open man. Well, not only that, but only five turnovers as a team. Compare that to 21 turnovers for Evansville. Um, and, you know, when you look at the shooting percentages, Duke doubled them up 62% to 30% for Evansville. Just fantastic all-around game from the Blue Devils. It's going to be tough, but I'm sure Coach K will find things. But it's going to be tough for him to find things that he didn't like in this one. He's going to look at the last three games and he's going to go, let's see, we won by 50. We lost by six, I think, to BC. Something like that. And, uh, and the BC game, you know, what are you going to do? You run into a team that's ready to shoot the lights out, and sometimes there's just nothing you can do. And now he goes back to another 60-point win. He is going to have to figure out how to motivate the players for the upcoming game, which I think we want to talk about a little bit. Right. The next game in 10 days, first home ACC game, looking for revenge in the conference against Florida State. And the Blue Devils will really need to show right from the beginning that they're going to stay committed to the defense. That's what really was a difference in this game tonight, holding Evansville to 18 first half points and setting the tone early. If they can do that against Florida State, which is a tremendous um, athletic team, but not necessarily a scoring one, the Blue Devils should be in good shape um, come, what is it, New Year's Eve Eve. Correct. And, and what I'm going to be looking for, and I think all of our Duke fans should be looking for, is that following this big blowout that they don't feel cocky about this, I'm glad the game against Florida State is at home because obviously when they went up to BC, they took the attitude of we just blew out a team by 50 points, we're ranked number one, we've won 11 in a row or something at that point. And, um, you know, Coach K has got to be the master motivator to bring them down to earth. Right, and last bit for me, I want to see Javin back on the court. We got 10 days, heal up, buddy. See you guys on December 30th. We're out. And that's Dealing with the Devils.